I'm going to talk about some of the templates and forms that are there for your use. And there's been some good questions in the uh, in the chat. I was just answering one of the questions there. Uh, we'll show you how to change grid squares and a whole bunch of other things. But for now, let's jump into my Windows machine here. So we've kind of gone over the interface and we'll go into a little bit more of that as we go forward. One of the benefits, one of the powers, one of the things that, that we're hoping that you'll all see as we go forward with the class is that there are a number of, and, and we're getting close to 100 or over 100 different standardized forms that are available to you as a, you know, an emergency communications operator built into the WinLink uh, system. And if the form that you need isn't there, there's the ability for you to create your own form or if it's useful enough to create it and submit it and have it come along with the package so that they're available to you. And in, in the same manner as Chris just showed you, if I want to send a new message, I'm going to select message, logged into my and a new message, or you can click the new message button. And I could just start my email from here. I've got an important message to get through. The EOC manager wants to get a message to a location and they want to send some information. That's great. I could just type it in here. But on the other hand, I could look at different templates. There are a number of templates that are built in and standardized. As you can see here, there are American Red Cross forms available. There are, you know, State of California, Canadian, FEMA forms. There are the, a bunch of general forms that we're going to look at in a minute. There are the standard HICS if you're working with hospitals or ICS forms that are available. And they're all in here. They're ready to go. They're very full functioned forms that allow you to quickly fill out something and generate on the other side where you send your message to a very professional looking complete form that you can hand to someone who's not a ham that's expecting information to go from one place to the other such that they can respond you can bring it back to your station and then send it back so that people understand so i'm going to start with this just showing you a general form a, a general winlink check-in form and again i'm going to back out of here and show you that we'd go hey i'm going to send a new message i'm at a location and i want to check in i'm going to go to my standard templates and under the general forms i'm going to select a winlink check-in you double click on that and it will load up this form. And as you can see, there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of detail here. Date and time, I click into the field and it'll automatically grab my system time. So I don't need to like look at my watch or know anything other than my PC's up to date. So I'll fill that in. We're gonna call today an exercise. We can tell whoever's receiving this, how we're sending it, which systems that are available for today, I'm going to send this Telnet. So I'm going to select Telnet, but there are a bunch of other options here. I'm going to send this to KK6DA because he's uh, he's running net control right now and I'm, I'm locally out in the field at a location. We can check in with initial uh, call signs of the operators at site. And as we mentioned earlier, I live in a house with uh, six other hams. So I'm going to check all of us in at one time. And I'm the sender, my call sign here. A uh, location, so I can I can mark a location here. I'm in Woodland Hills, California, and the system has the ability to grab a uh, a GPS coordinate or an MGRS coordinate or a grid square, and I can type those in automatically. I have them entered in my system. In fact, I have a GPS dongle that automatically populates these numbers. And again, we'll talk about how to do that in a later session. But just know there's a lot of information. There's a lot of detail here. I could say Woodland Hills, California, which is a big location or I can give you down to my decimal GPS coordinates would look literally will show you in the corner of my house where I'm sitting in my shack right now, sending you the information. And I could type a basic message here, like we're hungry. Please send pizza. Okay. You can send a lot of information here. You can send a lot of information here for this basic check-in form. I could send a maximum of 250 characters. So uh, a little bit more than a than an original Twitter feed, I can send information about a hey, uh, neighborhood safe, or we have multiple fires, or we need medical aid, or any number of different messages that we could send, canned or otherwise. When I'm done filling out, again, this very basic quick check-in form, I'll select submit. WinLink's gonna let me know, hey, you're ready to do this. If you're really ready, say okay. And it's gonna post you out to a local host. You close the browser window because you filled this all out in a web browser. 
And here's my message that I started a minute ago. It automatically populated KK6DA. I'm going to add uh, W6AH to this. And I'm also going to add this to uh, NR6V, my other awesome instructor. It's got the basic information, the subject. There's this XML viewer that shows the form that we're going to send this in and the details of what's in my message. When I'm good to go and I'm ready to go, again, as Chris showed you, we're going to post this to our outbox. And as you'll see, now I don't have only one message in my outbox, but I have two. They're ready to go. I did my express check-in, and if I were ready to send this, I'd go ahead and open my Telnet session and send and receive the message. But before we do that, I want to show you one more form. We have a bunch of custom forms in Los Angeles and, and all across the nation. But what we're trying to do is show you the value, the why you might want to do this. I'm going to open up another new message. And remember, as I've pointed out here, I have two messages waiting in my outbox. I have two messages that are ready to go and send. If I were sending this via Telnet, they'd go pretty quickly because I'm connected to the internet. But if I was sending this over RF, it would take a little bit longer because we're only going to send a certain number of kilobits per second. But I can stage a whole bunch of messages and send them in one transaction. I send the message to a gateway. The gateway sends me an acknowledgement. We go back and forth. And again, we'll talk about this in a future meeting in a little bit more detail and show you how to do this. In fact, we're even going to help you get set up and connected. For this one, I'm going to go into a slightly different form. I'm going to look at the shares form, and there's a spot rep form. Spot reps are a very useful form. I'm going to select the spot reps form, and again, opens my browser and gives me a little bit more of a targeted, detailed information. There's a precedence here. What's the level of precedence? It's a flash, immediate priority, or routine. If you're used to working with shares, you'll understand what the, those levels, those priorities are, but I'm going to call this routine. It's automatically populated the date and the time for me. My task number is whatever I want it to be, depending on what your task is, where you are. Uh, you might decide, hey, I'm at a location. We're going to call it this location in number one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. It's automatically knowing that I'm logged in, so it's going to send it to me. Again, I'm going to send this to one of my partners in crime, KK68. They want to know the, the state and location I'm in. It automatically populates Los Angeles County. Now I have a, again, I have a GPS device in here, so it automatically figures out where I am. And for the spot rate report, especially in a disaster, a hurricane, an earthquake, a flood, a tsunami or whatever, here's information about where I am on the ground right now so that I can send a message to my EOC. Landlines are functioning. Cell phones are functioning. AM, FM broadcast station, I don't know because I'm not listening to the radio right now. I didn't turn the TV on, so I'm going to say unknown. The water's working. Yeah, I heard the toilet flush down the hall a little bit while ago. The power's still on. Yes. The internet seems to be working. Any other info I can add here? Who's the point of contact? Well, I am. I sent this message. I can put in my information here. When I'm done with this, again, I'll say I'm going to submit my form. It, it reminds me, hey, if I'm ready to do this, I'm going to do this. Now I have my fully functioned note here ready to go. All of the lines of data only. It's not sending the entire form. It's just sending the metadata. And I will post this to my outbox as well. Well, now I have three messages in my outbox. Now, if I decide at this point, hey, I'm ready to go. Hey, the internet's up. Or hey, I've got an open window on the RF. There's nobody sending packet or, or VAR or other traffic over the internet. I'm going to go ahead and say, Hey, I want to send this. I want to get this out as soon as possible because, hey, I want my pizza, okay? So <laughs> I would go here, and and for now, we're going to show you Telnet WinLink. I'm going to open my session and get a pop-up window. There are some basic settings for Telnet, but don't worry about that. It's all fine. I'm going to say, hey, start my session. And what you'll see run through here is I sent one message. I sent two message. I sent three messages. And I got a message received and I disconnected. And once it's done disconnecting, that basically means I, I got my messages out. If you look at my outbox, it's empty. If you look at my inbox, I got some messages in. Uh, this was from earlier today, a different test. And I got the W6AH message from previous. That's all there really is to sending and receiving the messages. Again, 
a lot of the power of what Winlink is, and I saw some messages earlier on in the in the chat where you know this is just email and what's the benefit, and if it's just Telnet, you're on the internet. Um, right now, we're just talking about Telnet and internet because the the next level of complexity after you get set up and you get signed up and you can send messages is getting connected RF, whether it's a UHF, VHF, or an HF connection, and that will require an interface, a radio, an antenna, and we'll talk about that in future sessions, and it actually will actually help you decide which parts and pieces and whatever and how to get them connected and walk through the process. So this is like crawl, walk, run. We're still crawling here. We're using the internet to send these messages because that's what we can do in this particular format. Dave, we've gotten a couple of uh, questions that have come in through the chat at this point. One of them, uh, Mike KK6OKU, is asking, are forms available offline and are they small enough to be able to send via RF? Yeah, so the, the forms are available offline. In fact, you can do an update of the form package via RF, again, given you have a good enough connection. Not only that, you can actually take see you're sharing i'm sharing my screen but you can actually take a lot of these forms and put them on a flash drive they're html forms anybody can fill them out on any computer anywhere and you can actually give one of these forms to one of your served agencies one of the people who's not a ham at your location and say hey when you want to update this information and send it to somebody take this form fill it out on the flash drive save it give it to me and i'll put it out over the air they're very small forms. They're very compact. And again, you're not actually sending the entire form and even the forms aren't very big. You're just sending the metadata with some, some technical details that tie it back to a specific form. So it says, hey, I'm sending this, it's a spot rep. All you need to do is look in your spot rep catalog, fill in the blanks, and then you get the form. And I think the benefit of, uh, of this is it's fast, it's quick. There's a lot of detail and you can provide really specific information. I'll show you a really quick form here before we get into the next part to help kind of illustrate one of the things that this really made it clear to me. And in Los Angeles, again, we support hospitals. In the hospital request, we have what's called a hospital resource request. And if one of our hospitals, if there's an earthquake here in Los Angeles, one of the hospitals needs medication, equipment, personnel, or any of these things, they can give me a spreadsheet and I can type in any number of requested items. And, you know, they give me a spreadsheet of 20 different medications. The difference between uh, dicloxacillin and doxycycline is a couple of letters in the spelling, but in terms of the, the uh, therapeutical treatment is huge. And if we get it wrong when we're calling out over the air, it could be critical to a patient in addition to the fact that spelling out a, a, a medication that's 12 or 13 letters long, I spell dicloxacillin, Delta, India, Lima, Oscar, I can type this in here and send an entire message in seconds as opposed to having to read it out over the air. And that's a lot of the benefit of utilizing some of these forms and the capability of what's in WinLink. Explain. 